Previously on the board. Nobody else has any further questions. We found another body, Ian. We've got nothing that connects Ian to either Susan Clark or Elaine. Has it ever occurred to you that you could be wrong? <sighs> Ian? Ian? He's unresponsive. Can you increase our oxygen flow? Okay. This is Ian Ellis. He's still in custody. We'll send an officer to keep him under guard. Okay. Can we get out of the way, please? Let's move him through quickly. So how bad is he? He's lost a lot of blood. He fell unconscious. It's a serious suicide attempt. Early this afternoon, the body of Elaine Putnam was found. We believe she was murdered like Susan Clark and Rebecca Clayton in 1988 and buried at the site of a disused warehouse. Look, I know it's late, but I want you to go over everything you've logged so far. Cross-check for a link between her, the other victims, and Ian Ellis. You know what to do? Let's get on with it. Go. Yep. The checks have been running on Ian Ellis's whereabouts the night Elaine Putnam disappeared. OK. Might be better if we stepped aside for a moment. OK. The DCI needs to hear this as well. Go. There's been a development regarding Ian Ellis. Don't tell me you died in the ambulance. No, Gov. Records show that he and his brother David have a cast iron alibi for the night Elaine Putnam was killed. What alibi? Both were arrested on a Section 5 public order offence and held overnight for court. You check this out, Banksy. Twice. It's kosher. Ian couldn't have killed Elaine. He was locked up in Barton Street. Have you told the incident to him? No, Gov. I thought it best to bring it to you and the DI quietly. Yeah, you did right. You keep it yourself. Thanks, Banksy. No, thank you very much. Come in. Jack, I've just been talking to St Hughes. Ian Stable. He's out of danger. All right, good. Well, actually, I've got some more news about Ian. He and his brother David have got a rock-solid alibi for the night that Elaine Putnam was killed. According to Banksy, they were both banged up in Barton Street on the Section 5. You sure? He's double-checked. So I'd say that puts Ian in the clear, possibly for all three killings. Well, for Elaine Putnam, maybe. You're jumping to conclusions, Jack. Well, the three murders were committed in the same manner, yeah. Maybe he wasn't working alone. <laughs> That's possible. Well, the railway killings, you remember John Duffy? It was 15 years after he was convicted they found out he had an accomplice. Look, I'm just trying to keep you in the loop here, sir. All right, Jack, I'm sorry. I presume this is all around the station by now. Well, it's bound to come out sooner or later. Especially Barton Street have been doing the checking up. It's not going to be long before the rumour squad starts spreading the news. No. John, do you want to talk to the incident team? Not yet. First thing I'm going to do is go to St Hughes and talk to Ian Ellis before the press get to him. I'm going to tell him he's in the clear for Elaine's killing. Do you think that's wise? I accused him of Elaine Putnam's murder just before he tried to kill himself. I think he needs to hear it from me. Tell me you were well enough to talk here. About what? More questions? The last time we talked, I asked you about Lane Putnam. What, you're still trying to pin that one on me, are you? Don't you ever give up? It has come to light that you and your brother David were being held overnight in police cells on the night Elaine was killed. Really? Well, you've come to apologise, have you? I understand your anger and frustration, Ian. Wait a minute. You told me you believed all three killings were connected. That was... That is what the evidence suggests. So if I couldn't have killed this Elaine Putnam, then I didn't kill Susan Clark and I didn't kill Rebecca, right? It would appear... Yes or no? I'm innocent. You know that now, don't you? Admit it. You know you were wrong. Yes, Ian. On the evidence that has come to light, Yes, I believe I got it wrong. <laughs> I 
I know there is nothing I can say that will be of any solace to you, except that I will do everything I can to ensure your release as early as possible. Early as possible? Well, you just told me you got it wrong. I'm innocent. I want out now. Now, listen to me. Situations like this, your case will have to go for criminal review. Now, the hearings, the paperwork, that will all take time. Oh, I've had enough. If they put me back inside, I'll do it again. You tell them I'll do it again. If we can find the man who did do this and get a confession from him sewn up, watertight, then there's a chance that I can fast-track your appeal. A chance. Find him. You know where. You've no idea who did it because you've been barking up the wrong tree for the past 20 years. But you might be able to help us. Now, please, listen. The raves you organised back in 1988 are a vital link between these three murders. You want me to help you? Help you? Only to help yourself. I know how you must feel towards me. But please, for your own sake, I am asking you, please, help us. Cheers, mate. Security guard said he found a lock cropped like this. I better go first. Beauty before age. Yeah, get out of it. <laughs> I'd say the place has been empty for months. Whole area's up for redevelopment. Hello? Hello? What's that? Looks like some sort of work light. -like. Warehouse is empty. Um, it's up for sale according to the security guard. Did he see anybody? No, he just found the door lock cropped. Whoever was doing the digging had finished and left. Can you see the footage? Sure. Okay, this is our intruder. Probably sussed out the place beforehand. This is the van he brought the stuff in. A pickaxe, a shovel, a work lamp. We've run the plates, they're false. What's he dug a hole for? I don't know, Gunf, but it struck both of us how similar it was to the other burial sites. Looks like he's prepared a grave. All this publicity about a serial killer burying bodies in disused warehouses it could be a copycat. Or it could be him. The killer. Like you said, all this publicity. What if it's triggered him off? If Ian Ellis is innocent, Gov. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Ian Ellis is still a strong suspect in this investigation. Banks, to get someone to work on this image. It might give us facial recognition. I need something more concrete before I take this to the DCI. Yeah. I told you everything I could about Rebecca's murder, but you weren't even listening. You'd already decided. I wasn't hearing you, no. You bullied me until I gave you what you wanted. And now you are desperate to dig yourself out of the mess you made. You can believe that if you want to. But I am doing this for you because I owe it to you. And I'm doing it for Rebecca and her parents, and for Elaine and Susan. What are these questions? All three of the victims went to raves the night they died. Now, we need to know more about how they were run. You might just remember something. You're going back a long way. You used empty warehouses, didn't you? How did that work? Well, we'd drive around, spot somewhere for sale or lease, and break in. Who's we? Do you remember any names? It was just a crew who'd get together for each rave. You know, DJs, techies, drivers. We believe whoever did these killings met their victims at the raves. And then they left their bodies in the warehouses you used. And the burials would have taken time and needed privacy. What happened after the rave? Well, if the cops didn't bust us, it would go on to the early hours and we and get our gear together and clear out. What sort of gear would that be? Lights. Sound systems. They're always powered straight into the main supply. We always had a pocket electrician sort that side out. So who'd be the last person to leave? The electrician? Yeah. Yeah, don't tap the supply and turn the lights out. OK. 
Can you remember the names of any of these electricians? No. Well, we get them out of the local phone book. They work cash in hand. It was a lifetime ago. Sorry, I can't be any more help than that. Well, I'll pass this on. The phone book may well turn something up. Thank you. I'm doing this for Rebecca, superintendent. Not for you. Yes, of course. Jack, check the 88 phone directories for local electricians or electrical companies. It might be something or nothing, but it's worth a try. I've promised Ian we'll do everything we can to secure his early release. I believe he's innocent, Jack. That's great, thank you. Golf, we've struck gold. What is this? Kezi has been trawling through the 1988 directory. There's a company listed called Dowson and Summers Electricals. Company House have confirmed that the two named directors were Rob Summers and Philip Dowson. Oh, Rob Summers. Didn't his name come up in connection with the Susan Clark case? Yes, Gov. Grace and I interviewed Summers and his workmate Dowson yesterday. Summers knew Susan Clark through an old girlfriend, Liz. It was even suggested that he assaulted her on the day she was killed. Philip Dowson gave Rob an alibi on the night that Susan died. And although the company went bust in 88, they still work jobs together on and off. They're still friends. So the pair of them are both strongly linked to our first victim, Susan Clark. And they both have each other to thank for their alibi. All right, so we need bank accounts, credit cards, mobile phones in the names of Dowson and go. Summers, traced and monitored. Banks here, get a team together and bring Summers in. Let's go. Grace, come with me. We'll see if Philip Dowson's at home. There's a couple of lights on, but they could be on security timers. No sign of life. Grace, can you check if they've lifted Rob Summers yet? Should we take the door down, sir? Not yet. We can't justify that. We better sit tight. The company folded in 88, yeah? Phil got his knickers in a knot about some job I'd messed up. He kept the workshop on, but we both went freelance. What workshop? On Fernley Road, a little lock-up. Did Philip know Susan at all? Oh, he met her a couple of times, yeah. I think he even gave her some free tickets to some of the gigs he worked on. Well, she was a raver. She liked all that sort of thing. Philip worked at the raves. I was never up for it, but Phil did the electrics for him cash in hand. That workshop, Fernley Road, you said? Yeah, by the canal. OK, thanks. Interview terminated at 2200 hours. the same colour. And polythene sheeting, just like the stuff used to bury the bodies. The sheet's been freshly cut from the roll as well. Right, let's shut this down. Call it in, eh? Let crime scenes deal with this. Who knows what's in here? Superintendent Heaton, Sun Hill Police. Who are you? I'm Emma Dowson. What's going on? Didn't you hear the doorbell, Mrs. Dowson? I was in the bath. It's 10 o'clock at night, for heaven's sake. What are you doing here? We're looking for your husband, Mrs. Dowson. We want to talk to him in connection with a murder inquiry. Murder? What are you talking about? Is he here? No, he's not here. He's at Wade Bank Shopping Centre, doing double shifts. I'd be grateful if you'd come with us back to Sun Hill Police Station. Maybe you can help us clear up any confusion. Can I get dressed? Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 6. Can you run me a check on a registration plate? Papa 854 Yankee Papa Tango. <laughs> Some old mixing dicks. Yeah. Still working. <laughs> He's got the place rigged up for lights and sound. Yeah. I think that was his thing. Got his victims here. Kind of ritual. Lights, rave music. Must be seriously weird. Ruled by the moon. Eddie, come here. Oh. 
Those are the missing shoes. Rebecca's, Elaine's, and Susan's. Gov, the leaseholders confirmed the workshop's been kept on and paid for by Philip Dowson. Three shoes found at Dowson's workshop, Governor. They matched the shoes log for Susan, Rebecca, and Elaine. Yes, thank you. Gov, credit card company monitoring Dowson's card. It was used 15 minutes ago. Student bus down Beck College. 15 minutes? What's kept them so long? Banksy, you know Dowson, don't you? Yeah. I want you to take Kezia and Mika with you down to Stanbeck College. Then I want you to put another call out on this white van with the false plates. Narrow the search to an area around the college. With a bit of luck, he'll still be there. So let's get moving. Check it, little CCTV anywhere here, Kezia. Beard, long hair, medium build. Right side. Okay. Sorry, sorry. CCTV from the student union entrance. Freeze on that. Yes, that's him. We missed him by minutes. Seven from Sierra Oscar Six. Suspect left the Stanbeck College student union ten minutes ago, wearing a baseball cap and bomber style jacket. Suspect left with a female IC1 slight build. You dragged me in here in the middle of the night because you think, you think my husband's some sort of serial killer. I appreciate how difficult this must be for you, Mrs. Dell. Oh, this is just crazy. There's no way he's involved. I'm afraid we now have further, more concrete evidence which suggests that Philip was involved in these killings. What evidence? I want to see my solicitor and I want to see him now. You're free to do that, Mrs. Dowson, and you're free to leave, but I'm afraid we can't allow you to go home. What? Your house has been sealed and will be searched. We will, of course, arrange appropriate hotel accommodation for the night. This is outrageous. It's procedure. Sir, sorry to interrupt. This minute development. Excuse me. It's picked up a woman. This is a nightmare. All units Sierra Oscar. Be on the lookout for an IC1 male driving a white van. Talks have an IC1 female with him. Sarah Oscar from Sierra Oscar 2-2. We've got a sighting of a white van in Sacriston Park. Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 2-2. Suspect heading into Sacriston Park Woods. Wearing a baseball cap, bomber style jacket. I'm going to need an ambulance at my location. I've got a female unconscious. Possibly the victim of an assault. 148 from 52. Is the victim alive? Are you receiving me, 148? Oh, is she? She's got a pulse, but she's not breathing. He ran into the woods. Sierra Oscar from 275. Suspect has gone into the wooded area. Can I have a dog unit? Over. OK. All right. You're safe now, darling. You're safe now. OK? 5-2 from 148. Victim has regained consciousness. Sierra Oscar from 275. Lost sight of suspect in Sacriston Woods. I'll wait at the north entrance for the dog unit. Over. We've lost him, Jack. We've lost him. David Ellis told our reporter that the police now believe his brother is innocent. His family have called for the resignation of Superintendent John Hinton. They really want blood, don't they? Sir? OK. Last night, this guy, Philip Dowson, attempted to strangle Angela Coulsden. Now, some kind of amphetamine was found in her bloodstream, probably ecstasy, and she was taken to St Hughes last night, where she's now fit enough to be interviewed, so I'd like you two to deal with that, OK? OK. Dowson disappeared on us last night. We've had a dog unit search every inch of Sackerson Park, but no joy, so he's still out there. The monitoring is mobile, but it's still not registering on the system at the moment. I'm sure his credit card company have been on as well, Governor. Dowson called him in the early hours of the morning claiming that his wallet and his credit card was nicked last night. Well, he knows we're on to him, so he'll probably say that somebody else used his card in Stanbeck College. His wife, Emma, might be able to give us something. Friends or a bolt hole he may run to. Unlikely. She's not accepting Philip's got anything to do with this. She's sitting tight in our hotel and she's under no obligation to talk to us. Well, what about Ian Ellis? Now we've got Dowson's name, it might trigger his memory. Maybe we should steer clear of him, sir. No, Neil's right. In the absence of any stronger leads, Ian's certainly worth another try. He needs to know we're moving forward on this. I'm going to talk to him now. We 
getting closer, Ian, believe me. We have a name now. Philip Dowson. Does that mean anything? No. No, I'm sorry. How do you know he's guilty? All I can tell you is that we have very strong evidence that points to him. Well, like when you arrested me. Do you know why? Why you killed Rebecca? We believe he chose her at random. Or she chose him. Sorry? You have to understand how we were in those days. Rebecca really was a free spirit. I couldn't handle it. You say she chose him, what do you mean? We fought on the day that she died. I was jealous of some guy that she'd been seeing. Trying to control her, she said, and I just lost it with her. Slapped her, you know, cut her lip. When she left the flat, I now knew that she'd, she'd go and pull someone. Anyone just to show me that I didn't own her. It was all my fault. Ian, you weren't responsible. If we hadn't argued, she'd still be alive. If I'd gone to look for her instead of sitting around feeling sorry for myself getting hammered, it wouldn't have happened, would it? Listen, I know how it feels to look back 20 years and wish you'd done something different, being somebody different. But you mustn't do this to yourself. Let me keep a picture of Rebecca and my son. I killed her, haven't I? And there she is. As beautiful as she was all those years ago. I suppose that's one thing about dying young. I loved her. I loved her so much. You know, just... Piled on to me, you know, the, um, the arrest, your questions, the trial. There was never any time for grief. For me to really feel that she'd gone. Please. I can't stop being in this place. I have to get out. To get me out, please. Now, you sure you're up to this, Angela? Okay, we're going to record you. Get this typed up at the station so you don't have to go through it again. When you're ready, tell us what happened last night. I went to the union with a girlfriend, Sir uh, Sandra. Sandra Helms. I'd been there a couple of hours. She copped off with somebody and disappeared. So you were on your own? Yeah. I was thinking of leaving when I saw him. Can you give us a description? Long brown hair, beard. He was at the bar on his own. He smiled at me, looked really friendly. Older guys pay the way, don't they? So I went over to him and we started chatting. Did he say what his name was? No. I don't think so. I can't remember. They ran some blood tests on you last night, Angela. There was a considerable amount of amphetamine in your bloodstream. Was that ecstasy? I did pop a pill last night, but just the one. And I had a few drinks. Did he buy you a drink? Offer you a drink? He bought drinks, yeah. And he gave me a bottle of water. And you left the bar together? Yeah. I know what you're thinking. A complete stranger I've never met before. Silly cow. I'll be honest. We went there on the pool, me and my friend. He seemed a nice guy. And... What happened when you left the college? We had this fan. I know it sounds cheesy, but he suggested we go somewhere quiet. He drove to the woods down Sacriston Lane. Then what happened? He parked the van. 
and started coming on to me. I was up for it before, but then I started to feel a bit out of it, dizzy. Something didn't feel right. I told him to stop, and he started swearing at me. It was when I said I was going and tried to get out of the van that he grabbed me. Let me out. Let me out. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. So how does Dallas's personal history fit in with your profile? Right, well, he spent years in and out of care. His dad suffered some sort of breakdown. Yes, sir. And his mother died when he was young, right? She abandoned him when he was five years old. She was a heroin addict, sexually promiscuous. She died of an overdose shortly afterwards, so difficult childhood. Serious abandonment issues. You think that's what's been driving him? Possibly. All his victims were women, all sexually available. There were drugs passed around at the raves. From what Ian Ellis just told me, Rebecca could well have come on to Dowson at the rave on the night she died. Well, that would fit. Maybe all this is a deep rage against his mother that he's turned on his victims. Sir, Dowson used his mobile ten minutes ago. He was on the move. The bus terminus. The speed at which his mobile was moving, he could have been on a bus, taxi. He's back off the system, so we've lost him. There's a good chance he could still be in the area. Who did he call? The mobile just triangulated the call to a hotel on Burgold Street. It's the same mobile number given to us by his wife, Emma Dowson. So, she's been talking to him? This means we can bring her in, force her hand. Are you sure that's why, sir? I think she'd be more cooperative with careful handling. We haven't got time to play nice, Jack. I want Mrs. Dowson arrested on suspicion of assisting an offender to remain at large. That's what you've got to go on, that fuzzy image. You don't recognise your own husband. Why would my husband be with another woman? You tell us. We believe your husband attacked this woman in a white van, his van, using false plates. Then maybe someone stole his van. He also used his credit card at Stanbeck College. Then maybe someone stole his wallet as well. Did Philip tell you that his wallet had been stolen when he called you? Has Philip been behaving differently lately? Any difficulties between you? Anything you've noticed? No, everything's fine. You got the wrong man. If he's innocent, where is he? He's not at home, he's not at work. He seems to have run away. Why? Why would he do that? Maybe he read this morning's papers. Maybe he's frightened that you're going to do to him what you did to Ian Ellis. You got it wrong last time, didn't you? And this time you're blaming my husband, because that's what you lot do, isn't it? But I am telling you, it is not my fill. It can't be. Did you get anything, sir? Well, she's in denial, but she's also defensive. She's covering something. So how do we open her up? Well, what about Angela? Somebody real from now, not 20 years ago. Something about her attack might strike a chord. We've got Angela's statement on tape. We can play it to Emma. It might shake us, sir. Look, I know you need a result, sir, but... Philip Dowson's victims aren't all buried three feet deep. Some of them can still be saved. His wife is one of them. Yeah, but playing an interview tape to a member of the public, it's not orthodox, is it? Well, we'll ask Angela's permission. We'll explain that this might help us find the man who attacked her and stop him from doing it to anyone else. He started shouting at me. Slapped me. Suddenly he was a different man, like he was raging. Oh, I told you this was a waste of time. Then. He called me a bitch, put his hands around my throat. I thought he was going to kill me. Up until then, he'd been a real gent. Didn't even react when this driver cut across us, just said something about people who fly into a rage landing badly. I didn't think he'd hurt me. I didn't think he'd hurt me. Was it something that Angela said? Something about the attack, Emma? If you fly into a rage, you always land badly. And what was it about that? He says that. He says that when we're driving. Emma? I know it's not him, I know that. But he's been behaving so strangely lately. In what way, strange? I got close to a colleague at work. I teach primary. And 
He was just someone to talk to. Philip found all that emotional stuff difficult. And nothing happened. But Philip got so possessive and, and convinced that I was going to leave him. And that's when it started. That's when he started to get really withdrawn and and, and let himself go. The, the, the beard and, and the long hair and... Anything else? I mean, he read the papers about the murders, but I just thought it was morbid curiosity. And what about the phone call this morning? He said he wanted to meet with me, that he needed his passport and some money. He convinced me that you got the wrong man. And every bone in my body wants to believe that. Because I still can't believe you killed those girls. I know him. I, I can't believe it. I just can't. Can you drive with Emma, sir? She's accepted that Philip might have been involved in the attack on Angela. Coming to terms with the idea that your husband's a serial killer. And we still none the wiser where he is? We've had no further traces on his mobile. Perhaps we could persuade Emma to meet with Philip if he does call her again. It's one thing for her to accept that Philip is involved, sir, but turn him in. Well, maybe. But we're running out of time here. We need to broach the subject gently, yes, but we need to do it now. All those years, I would have known. Maybe he just didn't show you that side of himself. Well, maybe he did attack that girl last night, but that doesn't mean he killed those women, does it? When we go through a bad patch, maybe he's having some sort of breakdown. Or... He needs help, Emma. You can see that. Angela escaped with her life last night. The next girl might not be so lucky. You could help us. How? If he calls you again, you could arrange to meet him. Tell him you'll bring the money and the passport he wanted. I don't know. I don't know if I can do that to him. Take your time. Think about it. All those years I'd have seen something. You need to think about your future and your safety. That's what we're concerned about. I can't think of anything. Phil, where are you? No, no, I'm um, at the hotel. I told you the police can't force me to speak to them. Right, listen up. Philip Dowson has arranged to meet his wife, Emma, here, near Tower Bridge at 11.30 today. You've all seen the briefing sheet. DCI Meadows will head up the operation in IBO. Banksy, Kezia, you will observe from here. Grace and myself from here, Mickey from here. And when Philip arrives, we will lift him on my call only. Emma has been briefed that if Philip calls her mobile with further instructions, she is to comply and we will follow, okay? Let's go. All units confirmed in position. Over. Five confirmed. Seven confirmed. Clear line of sight. All units. Emma is taking a call. She's heading for the clipper. All units, go. Go to the clipper. Target one may be on board. Do you think she's tipped him off? Well, crossing the river gives a distance from us. It could be a last-ditch attempt. All units from Sierra Oscar 5-5. Get over the bridge as quickly as you can. We need to pick him up on the other side. He's going to get away. We cut him off. The boat will stop on the other side. Lieutenant Heaton, Sun Hill. I know you are. What's this about? I told you I didn't do anything. Why didn't you believe me? I trusted you. Philip Dowson, I'm arresting you on suspicion of. Oh, oh. All right, Grace, stand back. back. Keep away from me, Grace. Take away. over. Philip <laughs> Dowson, I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder. You do not have to say anything. 
but anything you do say may be taken down and given in evidence. You were at Stanbeck College last night. No. We have footage of you. That's not me. He's got a beard. Long hair. Haven't you recently cut your hair, Philip? Shaved your beard? Yeah. Yesterday afternoon. I feel like a bit of a change. Freshen myself up a bit. So that couldn't have been me last night, could it? You also used your credit card at Stanbeck College last night. Ah. Now I understand what's happened. I reported my card stolen yesterday. Ask my bank. Someone stole my van and my wallet. Really? And how come whoever stole your card knew your pin, Philip? I have to confess. I keep the number on a piece of paper with the card. Terrible memory. Things have moved on since 1988, Philip. Forensic developments mean even the smallest fibre linking you to Angela... Listen to me. You've got the wrong man. But then you make a habit of that. Well, not you personally, but Superintendent Heaton does, doesn't he? Are you watching the Superintendent? Got the wrong man back in 88, didn't you? How does it feel, Superintendent? And how everybody knows. How does it feel? He wants me in there. I'll take around tea with Grace. You worked as an electrician at Raves back in 1988. Is that where you met Elaine Putnam, Susan Clark and Rebecca Clayton? I had nothing to do with women at those gigs. I was there to work. But you did meet your wife Emma there, didn't you? So? She told us you met in October 1988. That's when the killing stopped, isn't it, Philip? When you found a loving, secure relationship with Emma? I don't know what you're talking about. She also told us you recently started having problems. You got very possessive, angry, depressed. That's private. Is that why it all started up again, Philip? Is that why you attacked Angela last night? Come on, Philip. Admit it. If only for Ian Ellis's sake. You let him rot in prison for 20 years because of what you did. <laughs> Don't get all holy than thou over that. I've watched you rise off the back of Ellis's arrest. I've seen you in the papers over the years, grabbing the limelight whenever you could, smashing that smuggling ring, dodging snipers' bullets, the big hero after the Sun Hill bombings. Did you get the right man that time? Can you still be sure? This isn't about me. Superintendent Heaton. The great I am. <laughs> oh, and you've got the wrong man again. The press will have a field day. This has got nothing to do with me. Now, why don't you admit it? Admit what you did, Philip. Is this how you got the confession out of Ian? Shouting and bullying it out of him. I need a drink. Let's go over this one more time. Philip, can you look at me? What? The rave scene, 1988. As someone described it to me as the second summer of love. I told your boss it was work. Well, all those women on offer, and you weren't interested. Don't you like women, Philip? What do you mean? Would you love them? Hate them? Because that was the idea back then, wasn't it, at the raves? Love everybody, let go of the fear. Don't know what you're talking about. The fear, Philip. Everyone is frightened somewhere inside. 
frightened of not being liked, of not being loved, and even if they are, frightened of losing that love. Your mother left home when you were very young. Can we talk about her? Why? Well, I understand she was a drug addict, that she died of an overdose shortly after leaving. That must have been very traumatic. Perhaps you don't remember. You don't forget that sort of thing. My mum was... She was trash. Shameless. So Rebecca, Susan, Elaine, were they also shameless? Were you punishing them, Philip, for what your mother did? Because she left you, didn't she? Were you afraid Emma was going to do the same? She met someone new, didn't she? A new friend. Is that why you lashed out at Angela? Is that why it started all again? Emma was the only woman I ever trusted. Twenty years. I loved her. I loved her. We found your workshop, Philip. Plastic sheeting, wire. Same saw that was used to wrap up the bodies. We also found these. Elaine's. Susan's. Rebecca's. Why didn't you bury these with the other clothing, Philip? What made you keep them? Look after them so carefully. What is it, Philip? Did they give you pleasure? I can't imagine Emma ever wearing shoes like these, can you? It's not her style, is it? No. Oh. But then, she was always different, wasn't she, your wife? Yes. You never thought she'd betray you. Not like the rest of them. Like her? Like your mother. Walking out on me. Walking away. How old were you when she left, Philip? I was five. And what was the last thing you saw of her when she was walking away? Her shoes. I don't remember her face. Only her shoes. I loved her shoes. Stilettos with sharp heels. Do you remember Susan Clark, Philip? Yes. You knew her through Rob Summers, didn't you? Yes. What happened? Did she come on to you at the rave that night? Yes. And you took her somewhere quiet and strangled her. You took her back to your workshop, took off her clothes, stabbed her with a screwdriver, didn't you? Yes. And then you went to the warehouse and wrapped her up and buried her. Proper burial. Yes. It was the same with the others, wasn't it? Except it got easier each time, didn't it? Yes. What about the shoes, Philip? I kept them. Why? Well, just to remind me. And you acted alone, didn't you? There was nobody else there helping you. No. It's only me. It's just me. I'm glad your appeal came through. Yeah. Thanks. I realize, Ian, you can't forgive what happened. No. I can't. But I wanted you to know... Davey! I'll take that. You'll pay for this. I swear you will. I just wanted to say to you... Between us... I am so sorry. Sorry doesn't cut it, Superintendent. 
You're gonna have to live with it on your conscience. Assuming you have a conscience. It's your own life sentence. Next time on The Bill. We still need that ambulance, over. Sergeant Dale Smith. I'm surprised I still recognise you. Look, the truth is going to come out, and if it turns out that you've been lying to us, then that's it, it's over. I think your history with Leanne is complicating things, don't you? And what would it cost if you wanted to buy us? £17 million. Pounds. Wow. So Aaron Shea came past your shop and bought four of these? Yes. For half a million pounds? Yes. <laughs> Piers Morgan on Dubai next. And over on ITV2, Paris Hilton searching for her new British best friend.